And to complete our afternoon, we have three races from the Goodwood meeting. Copper Mill Lad is going for a third triumph in our feature race. And at the line, Copper Mill Lad has probably just won it. Well, that's our afternoon, but we're going to start with football and look who's popped in uh, on his way to Loftus Road to play for Queen's Park Rangers against Luton this afternoon. Still word perfect, Gray, I hear, with Nesson Dormer and Pavarotti's song. Just about, Bobby, yeah, just about. <laughs> We've got lots to talk about, so we'll press straight on, and Love it's it. with that uh, friendly on Wednesday, England against Hungary. Of course, it was Graham Taylor's first match in charge. Yes, it was. Header down to Pierce, who's got to push forward on that side if this plan's going to work. Barnes again. Oh, what a run. And a chance here for Platt to get the ball in. Lineker couldn't get there. And here's Dixon. Plenty of the ball for Gascoigne. He'll relish that. And Lineker will relish passes of that nature too. Balls in the middle. Oh, good effort by Lineker. Lineker and Ball both running well, and it's a good piece of improvisation by the goalkeeper, Petri. Gascoigne, and now Platt, it's gone a bit wide. Gascoigne tries, Lineker does! And the first goal for England under Graham Taylor is scored by the new captain in the last minute of the first half. It's Barnes back to Dorigo. Now Ball's on the move. Against Distal. And he showed up well. Oh, Lineker! It happened so quickly. You hardly saw Lineker going in. It's not a goal. Disappointment on the bench. The referee has spotted an infringement and it won't count. Graham Taylor said he was uh, more than satisfied with his start. Ray, what was your overall impression? I thought it was very pleasing, Bob. I thought the lads played very well. And it's always nice for a new manager to get on, on, a, on a winning start. Of course, the next match is very much a, a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Because it, it was a friendly, and the next time it's for real, as it were, and the European Championship, Poland. That's right, but I think it's nice to get a friendly game under your belt before you go into a, into a major competition. And the game against Poland would be a much different story and a very difficult game. Let's start with Gary Lineker. Uh, I want your opinion on not just his contribution with the goal, which we'll see, but his selection as captain. I thought it was, it was an inspired choice to pick Gary, not only for his play on the field, but I think off the field. He carries the perfect, uh, he's a perfect model for an England captain. We, it's in a time now where we want more kids to play the game. I think Gary's the perfect choice. It's so all those who say choice. you can't be either a goalkeeping captain or a centre-forward captain? No, I think, uh, I think it's nonsense, Bob. I thought Gary was terrific the other night. And here we see if anyone can lead by example, he sticks in the, in the winning goal. It is. His scoring rate, 36 in 59. Incredible. In modern day football, for a, a forward to score that many goals, I know that sounds crazy, but where defences are so tight, it's normally midfield players that you see scoring more goals. But Gary seems to do it at an international level regularly, and it's a full credit to him. You've been a captain lots of times, I mean, in lots of situations. I mean, how important is it actually on the field as opposed to off the field? Well, I think obviously on the field, when you're made captain, especially of England, you have to have the respect of the players. And I think that's paramount as far as the England players are concerned. Everybody's got the utmost respect for Gary because of his achievements on the, on the playing surface. As you say, 59 internationals, 36 goals. That's quite incredible. Graham Taylor said it was a comprehensive 1-0 win, uh, <laughs> which we know what he meant. But the set pieces interest me, Ray, because I think England look as if they'll score all the time from set pieces if Gascoigne delivers the ball in. Yes, I think we've said many times before, Bob, it's all, it depends on the delivery, the service of the ball. And Paul Gascoigne, there's no one possibly better than him. Here we see a, a perfect opportunity to see the goal against Egypt, where he delivers the same ball. In the World Cup. That's right. Up goes Mark Wright. Just the slightest touch, that's all you need. And it's in the back of the net. And here's a, a virtually identical situation at Wembley. Yes, that's right. Gascoigne with the kick, and it's Mark Wright who gets the touch again. 
Gary Lineker is in there again, by the way. It's more and more almost like American football, with the, you see all the bodies moving and so on. Yeah. It's nearly undefendable, isn't it? It is. The big problem they have, obviously the goalkeeper doesn't know whether to come and get it, Bob. You being a goalkeeper would know. Uh, but it's also, it only needs a touch from a defender to be a goal. So if the ball's delivered in there properly, then it's, uh, it's very, very difficult to get away. We can't leave out a man called Gascoigne. No, now, what would you think about Gazza the other night? Well, I thought he did very well. It's, he's had a lot of pressure on him. And it's a big game to go back into. Graham Taylor's uh, first game as manager. And it was a difficult occasion for Gaza. Uh, I mean, people are looking for him to entertain. But there are two sides of that shown here, Ray, aren't That's there? right. Well, this is the side we want to see. That's a mutual respect from a very good player and an excellent referee. Uh, possibly this is the side, although uh, Gaza chose to, to stick his tongue out instead of take a swipe at the chap. It, it's a heck of a tongue, isn't it? It's a rascal tongue, Bob, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't... It's how the referee would interpret that as well. He's, he's taking the, the, the mickey out... You mean out. it could be ungentlemanly well, conduct? He's taking the mickey out of a fellow professional. Obviously, we don't want Gaza to stop being Gaza. That's what we want to see is the way he interprets the game. But I think that was slightly out of order. I think it's also how Graham Taylor might interpret it, because he doesn't like things like that. I think he might have a word. I mean, it was a tongue there, but it could easily have been a right hook. Yes, that's right. That's right. I mean, that's, uh, anyway... We don't want to cut no, out no, no. his entertaining all, side. John Barnes was a definite plus. Graham Taylor said, I want him to play as if he's enjoying himself. Now, he did look as if he was doing that right from the word go. He did, definitely. I thought John had a super game and was the highlight of an England, a fine England performance. And we see him here, I think this was the first minute of the game, picking a ball up in a left half position and just running past players, as he does for Liverpool week in and week out. Uh, but it's not only his dribbling, you see the perfect vision here. With this pass, he takes out four Hungarian players. A really terrific pass, and hopefully we've seen the start of a, a new John Barnes era, really. Would you say, Ray, this is Lee Dixon just coming in to poke it in there. Yeah. Um, would you say England have to be very careful about the euphoria of the World Cup prior to this obviously important start against Poland? Yes, I think they do. It's, uh, they've got to take every game on its merits. And uh, the Hungarians the other night weren't the best opposition. But we've got to concentrate on our own game. I'm sure if we get our own game in, in order, then we'll create problems for every team in the world. Mm. Well, we've got lots more to look at. But uh, just sit with me for a moment, because we're now uh, going to the newsroom. And uh, we've got the Faroe Islands to look forward to. We've got Scotland. But now it's to the newsroom. And waiting for...